So now you guys have tried to create um, the very basic application here in OpenShift, but uh, to be honest, creating the application is not going to be the problem, but for us to publish our local application to OpenShift using Git, that's going to take a bit of work. So we need to run this, I'll, I'll add a link in the description, but you need to go into Get Started on Windows or Mac or whatever you're using, because we need to set up a few environment settings and install a few programs to actually get up and running with this. So just follow this tutorial. I'll try and do it here uh, just to show you. And the first step is to install something called Ruby. If you've never, uh, if you want to know what Ruby is all about, well, you can go in and read about it, but it's, um, it's just a, a program that's been used to develop uh, s uh, different p types of software. So it has a lot of packages that you can actually use. But again, if you wanna figure out yourself, you could go in and, and read more about Ruby. I don't wanna go into details here. I'll just follow the installation guide. Now there is something very specifically, we have to use Ruby 193. Remember that, that's really important or you will not make it world, uh, work. So I wanna go in on downloads and I wanna find 193, this guy right here. I download that one and as soon as he's downloaded, I just run the installer. Um, and again, if, if you guys don't wanna watch the video, you can just skip it because I'm just going to do step-by-step step what they're reporting and then I'll, I'll mention some of the things that I've faced in the times I've tried to install this on Windows because there are some issues that can pop up here and there. Um, so why is this not completing? It will probably take a second, there we go. So I'll just start the installer I'll go back to um, to the OpenShift page on how to install this. I'll select English, I'll accept the license, uh, and I'll ju just install it default. Now I'm not sure if we should add anything in here. I don't think we should, but let's just check it out. Do, 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 nothing special. Uh, I would like to add it to the executable path so that we can use it in the console. Now that should do fine. So it's installing it and then we can figure out if it actually works using our console and writing Ruby version. When this is done, there we go. So let's uh, open a command prompt here and just write Ruby version to see if Ruby is actually installed. And there we go, I have Ruby on my machine now. That means that I can start installing. This is almost an, another type of NPM or any package management system that we can start installing different tools and um, it says we should install Git. It's already there, so we don't have to do that. If you wanna make sure you have Git in your, on your system, we did it a few times so you know it's there, but you can always write Git version to see if Git is actually available. Okay, here comes the first Ruby command that we're actually going to call. We're going to call gem install RHC. That means we wanna install the remote host client for OpenShift. So I'll just run this command and it'll take a little while and it'll actually install a way for us to start communicating with OpenShift. That's the goal here, is for us to locally be able to talk to OpenShift. So we need to set up a few commands to get it available. So now that we are done installing uh, the Ruby part, I'm going to show you how to get remote access. Let me just scroll to the top here just to show you where I went. Um, inside here, there's a list of the things you can do, and I wanna to go to remote access. and one of the first thing it tells you is to get access to your applications of OpenShift, you need to start running this command to try and get access to OpenShift. So I'll start up by running the command RHC setup. Now, if this fails, it's because somehow Ruby did not install the, um, the RHC command tool. So you need to try again, read the, the tutorial if it fails. Now it pops up with OpenShift, Red Hat, Calm. That's the host name that we're using, so that's perfect. It's asking for my login name. And I think it's something like that. Oh, we need that. And the password, that is something I will not tell you. And hopefully it can pop up. And then it says, OpenShift can create a store token on disk that allow access to the server without using a password, yada, yada, yada. Say yes here to get a token for now. If you wanna dig into this onto how to make it more safe, you can get back to that later. But what it does is it pretty much creates a token for you that we can use for secure communication between OpenShift and the local host. Okay, so your local machine will actually be able to talk to OpenShift through this RHC client. Now it asks again, do you wanna 
upload this to OpenShift so it knows about you when I say yes again, please upload it. And then it pops up and says, what should the name be for this key? And let's just call it Last Builder Desktop in my case. It really doesn't matter. You can figure out any name you want. And then it tells me where the private key is. Um, and actually now you can start seeing I have access now. It says you're using run of three gears. You have an application up there called Node.js. So guess what? We have now have access to our OpenShift. So now we can start doing some crazy things in the next lesson.